for people who are into the, the Japanese scene, there's an expression called hashiria. Um, that refers to people in Japan who are into modified cars. I've always loved cars, even when I couldn't drive, I've always loved cars. As soon as I passed my test, I just wanted to buy the fastest thing I could, uh, which was a 950cc Fiesta. <laughs> From London and beyond, the Hasheriers have travelled all the way to Tur Western Airfield in North Hants. It's a dismal Monday morning, but this is one of the few places where they can practice drifting. I have been drifting about a couple of years. It's about getting the car sideways. Delicate balance. Trying to keep the front end gripping and the rear end losing. Sliding the car around uh, corners, just sort of on the edge of traction. Technique, skills, it's an art. He's nerdy. Don't, you're going to get me in trouble. It's blatantly nerdy. We are all anoraks. Yes, I'm a car anorak. And like all nerds, computers are heavily involved in Hasharia life. In their case, it's a simulation driving game which allows the player to modify the car so it handles better. Gran Turismo is the closest that's come out so far to a proper driving simulator. It's got the same cars that you can see here. You can tune them up to the same level that we do here. And so what, often what we'll do, if, it, if it's not the right kind of weather for us to go driving in our cars, we might all sit around at a mate's house, practice drifting in Gran Turismo, which is good fun, that kind of thing. Although in its infancy here, Hashiria is a regular part of Japanese nightlife. It started 20 years ago as a way to navigate tricky mountain roads at speed. Although some Japanese race illegally on public roads, it's recently been confirmed as a national sport. We found out about the scene really through the internet and through Japanese magazines and Japanese DVDs and videos, that kind of thing. Um, we do our best to find out about what's going on over there and take our lead from, from really what, what the boys in Japan are doing in terms of how they tune their cars and the kind of things they get up to in their cars. I started by, uh, I went to a local company, I bought a video of theirs from, that came over from Japan that had a load of drifting on it. And um, literally, I just, I had my uh, old skyline, I just thought, oh, I'll have a go at that, see, see if I can do it. James, he's known as the Driftaholic, and he's excellent. Normally, we do it once a month. Um, we've got a group of about, normally about 15 to 20 people who come along. Um, they're all, all into this, the Japanese cars and drifting. I don't do so much drifting, but I have a play. Every, you've got to have a play. It looks good fun. You've just got to keep the car sideways as long as possible, basically. Just using all sorts of techniques, really. Just keeping your foot to the floor, using the handbrake, braking, all sorts of different things. It's exciting when the, the back end of a car steps out and for us it's all to do with the art of controlling that and uh, doing multiple drifts so you link one drift into another drift into another. Looks easy enough doesn't it? But driving like this requires real skill and needs to be treated with respect. Definitely dangerous if you do it in car parks or in wet roundabouts. That's why we hire out airfields like this where you can push it to the limit and risk losing control, and if you do, the worst that will happen is you'll spin out into the grass. It's really just an adrenaline rush is, is what we're all after. Um, the feeling you get when a, a turbo engages and the boost that is a result is fun. Everyone does look at you and it's like, oh, the girl, right. And I guess you don't get taken seriously, but I try my best. Lisa may not hack it when it comes to drifting, but she certainly knows a thing or two about motors. At the moment, I've got Nissan Sunny GTR. It's a Pulsar because it's an import from Japan. That's my baby. I've got graphics all over it. The engine has been modified as much as I possibly can. And I've had that for a few years now. I love it to pieces. Internally on the engine, We've changed the head gasket in there, it's a metal head gasket, and take more pressure. We've got HKS dump valve on here, which you can see there. The fuel rail's been changed so you can get more fuel through it. We've got oil cooler kit here with pipes which feed down. You've got a little radiator shoved down the front. I get bored of them. 
you get used to the speed, there's only so much you can do to tune certain cars. So obviously once you've tuned your motor to the max, you've done everything you can, what do you do? You need to start on another, and the one everyone's after is the Nissan Skyline. Big Brother's come along, and it's great. It's pretty standard at the moment. I've had it rolling roaded, and it's producing around 420 brake horsepower. I tried to think how much I spent on my cars. I would say, conservatively, around 25, 30,000 over the years, all in, conservatively. <laughs> Lisa's not alone when it comes to spending big money. Most hasheries part with thousands to modify their cars, and of course, you then want to show it off to your mates. These meetings are social occasions, a chance to swap dealer numbers and pick up tips on how to make your car go even faster. to the pursuit of speed there's nothing like the drag race for settling old scores and it's the one place where Lisa excels. My main thing is drag racing. Everyone knows Lisa isn't afraid to put pedal to the metal as such. Um, don't think of her as a shrieking violet in the corner. You're at the lights, you're waiting to go, you've revved the engine up to the revs that you need for the turbos to kick in and the adrenaline is pumping through you. Your thoughts of crashing or anything are out the window. Your thought is from getting to A to B as quick as you possibly can. To talk about that, but uh, but today we've got our uh, GTS Skyline. We've got four Skylines. Uh, today we brought our GTS, which is just real drive. I don't like losing, and I want my car to be faster. And if their car is faster, then I'll do a little bit more to make mine faster. She was in a very fast uh, four wheel drive sunny, so uh, yeah, good luck to her. <laughs> Something about driving a car like a skyline, everyone looks at you. People that don't even know what a skyline is, you drive past, and it's the feeling like I may not be the richest person, I may not be famous, I may not be anything, but I've worked hard for this, and this is, you know, part of me kind of. I love it so much, I wouldn't give it up for anyone or anything.